back. You can't help but see David Attic's work as you make your way around Houston. But who is the guy who makes the gargantuan telephones and president's heads? We thought it was high time to find out, so we paid him a visit. And here's a great day self-portrait. My name is David Attic. I'm an artist, a painter, and a sculptor. I was born in Huntsville the end of the roaring 20s, but where I was born is pretty much the meowing 20s because small town. The war came along, World War II, signed up for the Army Air Corps, it was called then, now it's the Air Force, and was sent back and forth to Paris uh, on the Air Transport Command. I was young, I was 18, but that introduced me to art. I mean, Paris, how are you gonna keep them down on the farm, you know? So as soon as I got out of the service, I had a GI, my GI Bill, so I went back to Paris as a student, a young kid, and, and, and that was the making of me, the whole thing, being in Paris, that age, two years, you know, I learned about everything, about Kafka and Stravinsky and stuff that you don't learn in Huntsville, Texas. New Year's Eve, 66, 67, I was visiting a girlfriend in San Francisco. And I said, what are we gonna to do tonight, New Year's Eve? She said, we're going to Fillmore Auditorium. That's the mecca for rock and roll and light shows. I was so taken by this projected light that I wiggled my way to the stairs to get up in the balcony to see how it was done. And that was so exciting that a friend of mine owned an old, an old building down on Allen's Landing. And he said, we got an empty building. Wouldn't you like an art uh, studio down there to paint? So when I walked up that third floor, it just hit me. Light show, nightclub. So I had some friends, we looked for a name and finally came up with Love Street Light Circus and Feel Good Machine. <laughs> and it was the hottest thing going. Uh, every band in town played there. The, the two ZZ Top guys met there. They were in different bands and they, they joined forces. And the first concert they ever did as ZZ Top was at that club the, the next year. I got back to painting after that. Uh, Joe Russo, who was building the Lyric Center, commissioned me to do this big cello, this big abstract cellist. And the response from the public was so good that it made me realize that the public art that could be seen by thousands of people was, is more interesting than paintings that could be seen by the people that own them and, and their friends. So as long as I had the guys working, I decided to go ahead and do a couple more. So one of them was the, uh, the giant telephone uh, that's now in Montrose. But I've got uh, Alexander Graham Bell's face on the front of it, so we call it Big Alex. The other is the cornet or trumpet, which is in Galveston on the Strand. And there was no, those are not commissioned works, either of them. I just did them on my own to get them out there and see if, where they'd go. In the case of the cornet, I had a real cornet. I just took all the measurements and multiplied by X, by 20 or whatever it was. And I, every dimension there. And then we just bent a lot of metal and it's all in concrete over metal. And I took off for the summer and visited a friend in Canada and drove back through Mount Rushmore. The idea popped into my little brain when I was driving back through Kansas or Iowa or something. Wouldn't it be great to do the presents big, but not that big so you could have an intimate look at them. So I thought, I'll do four presents. Then I thought, no, I can't do four. I have to do them all. So that's, there were 42 at the time. So I did all 42, and uh, that's what you see out here. I'd always like those three figures behind the cello. So I thought, I'd like to do them big. So I decided to do the Beatles. Everybody loves the Beatles, including me. So three instead of four. One seated and three standing. Four instead of three, I mean. And uh, that led to them, and I just did them on my own, just for fun. I, I bought a piece of property right on I-10 at the Patterson Bridge where I was going to put the Beatles. They wouldn't be very appropriate there. They'd be kind of all snugged up. So I thought, I'm going to do something else that'll go on that spot. So that, that's the We Love Houston. And I thought, going through Houston, if you see something festive like that, it would just give you a little lift, a little smile. Why I enjoy painting so much, it's what I do. The most relaxed I am is late at night when I'm home painting, the phone's not ringing. You're absorbed in it, you're lost in it. 
it, it's what I like to do. My name is David Addix. I'm an artist, a painter, and a sculptor. Well, South Dakota may have Mount Rushmore, but David Addix gave Houston Mount Rush Hour. That seems appropriate for our city of freeways. The presidential foursome can be seen near the intersection of I-10 and Highway 45 near downtown. We'll be right back.